Ahmed Farah and I was born in Somalia in 1968. I was actually born in countryside of city of called Brau in northern Somalia. Where I was born is actually the countryside because I'm actually from a rural area. I was born to a family who was actually a camel herders. And at the early stage of my life, actually, look, I used to look after my dad's camels. Uh, when I was about six years old, I moved to the city to learn the Holy Quran and also to join the school. Uh, then, shortly after that, I actually moved to Aden in Yemen, where I've actually had my formal education from primary school until uh, intermediate. Then I moved to Emirates, uh, United Arab Emirates, where I finished my, uh, my intermediate secondary school. And after that, I went back to Somalia in 1989. I moved to UK in 1993. Uh, as you know, Somalia was in civil war from 1980s until the fall of uh, the Adbera regime. Uh, that actually affected, I'm actually not mainly from the north, and the north has been affected by the civil war. <coughs> that civil war actually led to destruction of the cities. Uh, people fled the cities and they actually we went back in the, in the countryside. Basically we were living in refugee camps and also in the countryside in villages. Uh, my dad left in UK as a sailor. He used to live here. Uh, due of the war circumstances, he decided to bring us to UK. And that's when we came in 1993. Uh, I first landed in, or arrived in, live in Cardiff, in South Wales. Relatively, Cardiff is a small city, but it's very multicultural. Uh, it's a more uh, cosmopolitan city. Uh, it used to be a port, a very important port. Uh, you find all nationalities like African, uh, Italian, Indian, uh, West Indies, uh, particularly in the part of Cardiff where I lived, which is Cardiff Bay. To me it was, even coming from Somalia, where probably in, in a country which actually uh, destroyed by civil war, that city was, to me, is like a little heaven, <laughs> a well-established city. Prior to coming to England, England was like a paradise to us. He was going to there, we got many wealth, education, everything. That's, that's the expectation you, you have when you come to UK or any European country. Uh, but upon arrival, that, you know, reality become <laughs> very sorrow <laughs> because the time I've come actually was where Britain in, in the economic depression era in the 90s. And most of the people there are unemployed, there's high unemployment. Uh, you find people who born, they born their parents were unemployed. They continue unemployed until 1997 when, when the labor come to power. So that was a shock to me uh, because I was expecting her to get a job, to education and everything. But two things, when I arrived here, I was about 25 years old. 25 years old, uh, when in terms of joining education itself, not having education in the UK, that's an easy, it's a long way to get to university. You have to do a lot of access courses and uh, things. And, Luckily, I was, I was speaking the language. The language wasn't a problem, but the other thing is qualifications leading to uh, education. The same thing, the skills, transferable skills. When you're looking for jobs, you need to have certain skills, which enable you to uh, find a job. I arrived in March 1993. And until the following March 
I was jobless. I was claiming uh, benefits that used to be used to call employment, unemployment benefit at that time. I was looking for a job because I was I wasn't happy to take benefits, and I was trying to get a job, paid job, uh, so I could build myself and also help my family as well. So I apply for jobs, all types, customer service, uh, retail, factories, uh, warehouses, every every possible job. I make 2,500 job applications, uh, which none of those were successful. I uh, never realized why. Probably one of the things, when I realized later on, when why I was signing, they actually sent me to a job club, which is just that's something they introduced those days. In that job uh, club, it was only for seven days, and they sent all those people who are employed to signing up just to give them, you know, t interview techniques and how did they, how to write their CVs, how to sell themselves in when they're going to interview. I learned something very important from that job club which was how to sell yourself. Basically, there was no attraction. The is absolutely his advice of my uncle. He, he said, come to Liverpool, Liverpool is fine. Because in Cardiff, it was, there was no jobs in Cardiff. I was looking after that I left that job and uh, <clears throat> I was struggling to find a job. Then he, came, he actually visited me in, in Cardiff and he said, well, why you don't come to Car uh, Liverpool, it's better if you come. Those days, Liverpool used to call the city of charities, where the only thing that was probably operating in Liverpool was charities. There was more than 180 charity working in Liverpool, all funded by the local government, uh, f you know, funds from the city council. My uncle said, well, there's a lot of these charities going, probably you can find a job coming join us in Liverpool and that's why I've really come to Liverpool. I haven't experienced any, uh, you know, direct racism and attacks at me personally. But when I arrived in Liverpool, one thing I realised is the city is, <laughs> is, not, <laughs> is not a welcoming place for somebody who's our colour or any black person. Uh, particularly if when the first days I came actually went to the town, I could hardly see any black person or any person from uh, Asian minority in, in the town, in the shops, working in the shops there. Uh, I was quite shocked because where I come from, live, uh, Cardiff, it's a very multicultural. And that actually was a shock to me. Uh, and after that I realized, after about staying here, City of Liverpool is one of the cities who even, uh, you know, advised or been ordered to look at their equality, you know, uh, policies. One of the things that happened to me actually, I went uh, to Germany. On the way back, when I come back, in the beginning, when I go on, of course, well, this is not, not difficult. When I come back, uh, the immigration officer, some you say, well, even Somalia, if you know Somalia, considered as because of the Shabab, a Shabab group, Islamist, uh, any young person who travels to Somalia is actually, particularly, is they say, well, probably might join. Particularly if you look like if you got uh, if you look like a religious person, they will say, well, this man is a terrorist. And the actually officer called me back and said, I don't want to say, he greet me and say, where do you come from? I said, I come from Germany. And he told me, uh, have you ever been, where are you originally from? And I said, I'm from Somalia. And he said, have you been to Somalia recently? I said, no. And he said, when is the last time you've been to Somalia? I said, well, the last time I actually left Somalia in 1990, I've never been there since then. Then he said, okay, let's go. <laughs> But uh, <clears throat> being a Muslim in the West, particularly after September the 11th, there is a lot of, a lot of you know, uh, it's, it's got a lot of impact on Muslims. Uh, anything happen, immediately whoever done it, 
any terrorist attack or whatever, even if it's done by some idiot person, <laughs> they will straight point it out at the Muslim. <laughs> Without even investigating. And the media, media plays a great, a great role of that. And they, the now you've got terrorism equals Muslim. So Muslim, terrorist. And that's not the case. <laughs> Sumulala, 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 Sumul